I feel like I literally manifested New York Fashion Week for myself in some capacity. I was at New York Fashion Week in the winter, so earlier in Feb 2024. Like, you know what? Like, my brand is going to be here. Like, it's going to be New York Fashion Week. I don't care what event it is, but it will be here. I'll tell people about it. I would, like, research about it. Be like, how do I get there? And I'm like, okay, like, next year, maybe the year after. It's, like, a month before New York Fashion Week. And an event host who's also a friend of mine. Her name is Punkti. Shout out, Punkti. Hits me up. She's like, I'm throwing an event for New York Fashion Week. Uh, and I'm having designers who have South Asian descent. So, like, do you want to be in it? And I'm like, girl, do I want to be in New York Fashion Week? Hell yeah. Welcome to Brown Girl Unscripted. It's your girl, Rucha. I'm the host of this podcast. And on this podcast, we talk all things confidence, using confidence as your superpower, and keeping it real as the Gen Z sis you didn't even know that you wanted. We also have amazing girl boss guests on here, ranging from founders, influencers, executives, you name it. And in this episode, I'm going to be chatting with you guys about New York Fashion Week. For those of you guys involved in the fashion space, you know it just passed. But if you're not, it was in the first two weeks of September, and I have the privilege of saying that I got to feature my clothing brand, Ashki Studio, in New York Fashion Week. And I feel like before I started the brand, when I would see New York Fashion Week, it always felt like a super unattainable thing. Oh my god, getting something featured there, even being involved in any capacity, seems so far fetched. And in this podcast, I'm gonna be spilling the tea on the mindset shifts I made to kind of get myself through Fashion Week, even get involved the things that I wish I knew and what I learned throughout the process so that you don't make any of the same mistakes, but also so that you can also get into New York Fashion Week. That being said, I'm not saying that I've made it per se, whatever that means anyways, but I've gotten questions with people asking, oh my God, how did you do that? Like, what's the process like? What is it like? And I'll chat about it and put you guys on, okay? Because we don't gatekeep around here. Okay, well, let's get into it because honestly, I will keep yapping otherwise. First things first, let's talk about how all of this came to fruition. I started my company earlier this year. Like I launched it earlier this year. And since I launched it, I was like, I really want to feature in New York Fashion Week. It was always a goal of mine, but I never really thought that I would get it until like two to three years into the like the company life cycle or life it's like yeah life cycle that's the name yeah yeah um into so the company life cycle that sounds so weird to say i don't even you know when you hear a word too much and you're like oh my god this literally sounds like just a lot anyways never minding that <laughs> um yeah so i i would talk to people about it etc i um that's when i also like moved back home initially uh because i was in philly before and essentially i would come to the city a lot for networking events for my company etc i started making more friends in the city who were in the entrepreneurial space that being said i would talk about how i wanted to be in new york fashion week initially i thought like i want to model in it but i realized i don't know if i'm the biggest fan of runway And then I'm like, okay, well, I think it'd be great to put my brand in there. And I clearly remember, and I'm telling you guys this because it's a story about how I feel like I literally manifested New York Fashion Week for myself in some capacity. I was at New York Fashion Week in the winter, so earlier in Feb 2024, and I was with a friend who also models. And we were there, whatever, and I'm like, you know what? Like, my brand is going to be here. Like, it's going to be New York Fashion Week. I don't care what event it is, but it will be here. And the friend was like, yeah, of course, like, duh. And I'm going to be the lead model for your show. And I'm like, period, let's do it. Then after that, like, I just told people about it. I would talk about it. I would like, I, I just like, I wasn't taking any actionable steps necessarily to get to this thing, but I would tell people about it. I would like research about it be like, how do I get there? And I'm like, okay, like next year, maybe the year after it was something I was like, I know I'm going to get it, but I wasn't sure like when or how anything. And it's like a month before New York fashion week. And an event host who's also a friend of mine, her name is Punkti. Shout out Punkti hits me up. She's like, I'm throwing an event for New York Fashion Week uh, and I'm having designers who have South Asian descent. So like, do you want to be in it? And I'm like, girl, do I want to be in New York Fashion Week? Hell yeah. So the rest is history, but that's essentially how I got started with New York Fashion Week and was able to feature my brand uh, during the week. That being said, if you don't know someone and if you feel like, oh my God, it's so out of reach, don't worry. I'm still going to talk about like, the process and like all the behind the scenes stuff because I get it like not 
everyone knows someone and like I honestly got really lucky with that but something that really just I feel like I took from that was to really talk about your goals and talk about them like like openly like I would just tell people like straight up I'm like I'm y'all know I'm such a yapper I mean I wouldn't have a podcast if I wasn't such a yapper so you know the vibes but I would tell people I was like hey like these are my goals with the fashion company this is what I want to do etc and they'd be like period let's do it and like I love how a supportive community can be and it's like you get support from the people that you don't even expect it you know like when I first started I thought like my like closest friends and my friends are supportive but I thought, like, it would be, like, just, like, them or, like, certain people that, like, maybe didn't support me, you know? Um, and it turns out people who don't even know me that well, like, would co- will come to the show. Or, like, people who maybe I was just became uh, I just became friends with, like, a year ago or, like, a couple months ago came to the show. And, like, it's so – it was so nice. And that being said, like, please talk about your dreams. Please talk about what you want to do with your life and be unapologetic about it. Because you will be so surprised who, like, puts their hand out to be able to help you. Because people do want to support that. People do want to support people with hustle. And that whole thing of speaking your dreams out, what if that creates, like, evil eye and all that? Like, obviously don't talk to people who you feel like have a scarcity mindset and are going to, like, make you feel as confident in what you're doing. But, like, if you can vibe check pretty well and you're like, I, like, you know, this person seems pretty chill. It matches, like, the vibes. Um, you're set. Just, that's it. Like, Yeah. That being said, let's get into the mindset shifts that I feel like I definitely had to make as I was going into New York Fashion Week and things that really helps me out throughout if you're someone that wants to do it next year uh, and just things to keep in mind. So first things first, you want to put the hat of CEO like full-fledged on. Sometimes when you're in the beginning of starting a company, you're kind of like working in the company and you're like, you feel like you're bootstrapped. You might have insecurities about where it's going to go, etc. I know I definitely did. Like, I'll be so open about that. Like, I was so freaking insecure for a good amount of the start of the company. I was like, oh my God, what's going to happen? And I still feel like that sometimes. Newsflash. But it's okay because like, it keeps going. It's fine. That being said, when I realized I'm going to be having a show, I'm going to be having a runway portion in New York Fashion Week, I was like, okay, like, we need to like, hone down we can get serious about this and I essentially started thinking of how I want to present this new collection that I was featuring in New York Fashion Week which by the way it's out right now and it's only available until October 7th because like I'm doing a sustainable pre-order model so I don't have to order in like massive bulks and if you guys like certain designs more than others like we don't have wastage which is I feel like the main thing like I want to be more sustainable all that so that being said if you haven't checked it out already go check out ashkystudio.com but back to the video or I mean back to the video back to the tips so I essentially was like okay I need to put like my full flood CEO hat on which I feel like wasn't fully on before and I started thinking of what is the best way I can make my audience in the runway feel and I feel like this is something that needs to be talked about so much more because when I would go to runway shows I would think about how the designs and how the presentation of the fashion show impacted me and what made me feel drawn like yes of course fashion is fashion and it is like there's this famous quote from Gossip Girl uh from Blair Waldorf if you know you know and she's like fashion is um movement architecture and design all in one it shows the pe- it shows the world who we are and who we'd like to be and I fully fully believe in that like fashion is so important and it, it, it defines like, who you are in a lot of ways and so when you go to a fashion show you think about how something makes you feel how the way the model is walking the way that the sound goes with the like the outfit of it like the vibes like the vibes are so important y'all so pay attention to the vibes vibes for lack of better term like I'm not gonna sound like super like pretentious out here but like literally go with the vibes and honestly I think that's the thing that helped me out the most like I started curating the clothes and thinking about what songs and what tunes and all that went best with the vibe of the collection and even thinking about how should the models be walking like do I want more personality do I want Um, them to be sassy and my answer was yes because I have a very Gen Z fun brand that's very much like sexy is a mindset like screw what anyone else thinks like very very out there and so yeah of course I wanted personality and I thought about that and then I thought about the songs I wanted so for me I feel like the company is the very good mixture of like this Gen Z like Doja Cat like I don't know like what's another artist Doja Cat um 
Tanache, like that kind of vibe, right? But then also it's like I I am Indian, I have South Asian heritage, so I wanted to include a little bit of like Bollywood in there. So I included Quab Deke, which is from Race 2, very like like sexy song, you know? And so like that was kind of the vibe of the show. And thinking about all this in super depth, like when I tell you, I literally would like spend like I spent hours thinking about the mixtape and like really thinking about what I wanted. And if I could go back in time, I would definitely have it maybe be a little bit more smoother flowing. But that being said, like the vibes mattered and the vibes are giving because when I thought about the way that people reacted and the way that I got feedback from the audience, like, oh my God, the songs are great, everything. Like, yes, like it was giving. And I even had a showstopper where one of my products was a thong. So like the uh, the model and Chata Katarina for doing this, literally like she had a blazer on, oversized black blazer with uh, one of our long sleeve crop tops. And she just like, threw it off like in the middle of the show and it's like yes period because that is something people remember so definitely have somewhat of a showstopper it doesn't have to be a model wearing a thong but like anything it is like you want to have something like that because people will remember that like don't be afraid to stand outside of the box and do whatever you want like I think that's something that really helped me out is that like because I don't come from like the fashion space I literally have an engineering degree like I like I'm an engineer. I just like went with the vibes of what I wanted fashion to feel like for me and for my company. So that gave me a competitive edge in a way because I was really just thinking about what do I want to do? And I want you to think about it like that too. Like throw away a lot of the knowledge that you've like gotten, like what it should be like and what you need to do. Because honestly, people are so used to seeing the same types of things they should be seeing. If you want to stand out, you want something that really has them like, whoa, you know, maybe not like, too much but a little bit right so don't be afraid to just stand out and don't be afraid to do what you want and get creative with it like literally don't be afraid and make sure that your story but the company reflects to the way the models are walking the sh- like the uh, songs and all that and that being said make the model designer relationship a priority like when I tell you the amount of times as a model I have hated working for specific designers because of the way that they would speak to the models etc or like how the organization was you know but then I took that knowledge and I was like you know for my company for my designs like I want to make sure the models feel super comfortable super sexy and that it's never a space where I ever want them to feel like oh my god oh I'm modeling for this person like I hate this like no you know at least I tried my best to do that and it makes a difference because then they feel comfortable and sexy and guess what they're presenting your creations so wouldn't you want the models who are literally presenting what you made out into the world they're the ones like carrying it out wouldn't you want them to like you and wouldn't you want them to feel good about the the brand that they're showcasing like give them a little bit of option about like what they could be wearing a little bit you know like obviously it is your vision it's your creation you own like the ceo hat but at the same time i think paying attention to what they want is super important because it really just creates that flexibility and comfortability that shows through the model's face when she's walking and you'll be surprised how many people notice that and how many people will think about that and be like hmm should I buy should I not so use that okay because it's super important the last tip that I want to cover before I get into the second part of this podcast is realize that what you perceive yourself to be as and how confident you feel is exactly how people are going to perceive you especially in the fashion space like when you do that designer walkout I want you to walk out with your shoulders back confident look wear your own designs even like girl model that like or or, or boy whoever you are like I'm cheering you on and I want you to literally own the fact that you made this and be proud of yourself. That is like something, especially when it comes to high achievers, people in business, or just like anyone who has really big goals, it can be really hard to be like truly proud of yourself. And I think this is something that you just have to like, learn to do because you're gonna go crazy and I know for me something I wish I did more was like realize how much of a big deal this is because when it was happening I was like yeah like I had so much imposter syndrome I was thinking oh my god I'm not good enough I will like da 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 and then I was like you know what like this is not the vibes like I like why are we why are we thinking like this why are we feeling like this and it didn't make sense to me to go in with that attitude at such a big event that literally is working in my favor so why would I do that and for you too like go in with the confidence that you can do it and that like you are meant to be there and throw that imposter syndrome out the door I know it's hard I know it feels so scary because it is terrifying it is so scary like this was my first runway show for my brand and I, w- I was terrified guys like I was literally so scared but 
I did it. If I can do it, you can do it. I killed it. You're going to kill it too. And I'm going to help you. I'm going to hold your hand throughout it. And I want you to know that you have the right to celebrate after it's done. I don't want you to think about all the things that could have gone better or worse, whatever. Who cares? It's done. It's done. After I wrap that up, like, I just, like, partied with my friends. Like, we went dancing, you know? I was proud of myself. Then, obviously, I needed some sleep because I barely got sleep that week. But that being said, like, celebrate yourself. That's something that I feel like is so important to do after such a big achievement. And then put yourself out there. Like, literally, as soon as, like, the fashion week is done and I had my shoot, whatever, like, I literally put on my website as featured at New York Fashion Week. I put it out there. Like, it's not bragging because, truly, it... It makes a difference. New York Fashion Week has a name. You want to put it with your brand and it just makes a difference. You would be surprised how much recognition you will get from that. And I am such a big believer of owning your achievements and being like a a subtle peacock. Like I think this is a term that gets used in corporate America sometimes when it comes to getting seen by executives, etc. But like you want to use the same thing when it comes to business, when it comes to fashion, because people pay attention to that like you want to you want to say hey I did that like I did New York Fashion Week like talk about your accomplishments and own them and talk about it at networking events like going onwards like use this to your advantage like I don't want you to just be like oh yeah I did that whatever like no you did that and you want to use that so that you can get even higher next time that you can even do in better next time you can use that for sales you can use that for brand partnerships whatever you can use it to your advantage and like why not dude like you get to do it you did that like you did that like let's talk about that for a second or you're gonna do that and you can do it because you deserve to be in the space and even if people are making you feel like oh you're not from fashion or you didn't do this which I feel like can happen and the answer to that is make your own seat at the table because when someone doesn't give you a seat you make your own table and you make your own seat and you're like actually I'm here and I'm here to stay and that's it that's literally it. So now I want to cover things that I am so happy that I did even throughout the show, like when it comes to logistics or even making my life a lot easier because I know how stressful these things can be. So I'll give you the tips on what I did to make my life so much easier. And this starts from literally the beginning of the week. I made sure to have my fittings earlier onwards and to make sure that the models were all set. And I did it at like a set location. I asked within my network, like, hey, uh, does anyone have a studio space to use? So I didn't have to invest too much money into renting out a space because I didn't. I, I personally feel like it's a little bit unprofessional to have the models come to your house. So I don't want to do that. And so I got them to come to the studio and it was great. You know, I, I, I think like being a little bit like bootstrapped with that, like not really investing financially in something that you don't need to is so important. And you need to keep that in mind, like as you make decisions in your business, especially with fashion week, because there's already so many different costs you have to consider, like the fashion week itself, um, your, your samples, your clothing, and then like any hair and makeup, all that, like it adds up, you know? And I, and I think that as a founder, we always talk about this, where being bootstrapped and being financially aware of where your investments are going is so important. And you got to save where you're able to, because your business should be also working for you and not like the other way around. So next thing that I really appreciated that I did was I made sure to keep my stuff super, super organized and in like like a proper bag and all that. And I say this because like I know it sounds like the bare minimum, but as someone who has like I was in Philly before and I've modeled for designers in Philly, like like I love Philly. The designers in Philly are so dope, so talented, etc. But I just like I've had so many experiences where people are bringing like trash bags and like they're putting their designs in that and it's like taking hours and hours to like find their designs and it's like it's like super unorganized or whatever and like the feel of that as like a model that I got like I don't want to model for them again you know and I never want to make people around me feel like that especially in early stages brand positioning and brand image is so important in early stages and you as a designer are rep oh my god NYC like cop cars okay we're just gonna I'm so sorry guys literally plus leave okay period it's gone it's so important and you want to take that into consideration all of your actions because it makes your life easier and also it makes everyone else let everyone else's lives easier and whether you like it or not you are kind of responsible for some other people here your models your hair and makeup team etc like you want to make sure that they're getting the best perception of your brand and 
And the best way to do that is to make sure you're organized because it, may, it makes such a big difference. And I love that I did that. Like I literally came with like a, like a nice suitcase. I came with um, like my clothing in like a bag, whatever. And it was like folded up like all nicely. So it's easy for the models to get access to. Everything was in like little Ziploc bags, whether it was jewelry, like you know, with a company called Knott's Jewelry. And the founder is amazing. And we got these like silver little Jumkas and it was, it was wonderful, but I, I wanted to make sure like all that was like put together properly because it's so chaotic throughout the show so as soon as she came here I was like hey like got you and I put like everything in one section and again sounds like the bare minimum but I promise like making this a priority will literally change how you feel throughout too because when you're wrapping up and you get home you're the one that's gonna have to deal with the entire mess of your clothes being everywhere of the jewelry being everywhere your clothes, just like you don't want to deal with that like that is not something you want so why not from the beginning make your life 10 times easier and just like stay organized and also have a better brand image as a result so that's what I have to say with that and beyond that these are my last few thoughts before I end this podcast because I feel like it's been a while I've been yapping for a minute but number one thing you deserve to be there I say this again and I'm gonna say it again and again and again because it's something that so many girls I see especially when you guys dm me like talking about and dealing with and I want you to know like it is literally your right to achieve what you want and to be in spaces that you want to be in you deserve to be there if you are there it means that you deserve to be there like stop questioning it and stop making yourself feel like oh my god like I hope I wish like no you have and you will get there and that's the confidence that you want to move with and even if that thing fails even if that thing doesn't work out then because you have that confidence you will then discover lessons from that to move you on to the next thing like would you rather be miserable and go after something or be happy and confident and go after something like I don't know one has more clarity one has more lessons one has better experience and is involved wouldn't you rather pick that like I don't know man that that's what I gotta say and especially as a first gen girly like if you're a brown girl or you're literally like someone with immigrant parents period or immigrant backgrounds like I get it it can be super scary to put yourself in these environments especially if it's super different from like anything you've been exposed to growing up like of course I like traditional job is something that and there's nothing wrong with that like literally I feel like I'm also applying for jobs right now and it's like you want to make sure that you are are saying okay that's where I'm from and this is what I have been exposed to but that doesn't mean that I can't also be in this you know like I just I'm such a big proponent of multi-hyphenate and I just want you to know like you deserve to be there and please tune out all the noise like I don't care who is judging telling you whatever like I don't care tune them out because unless they are in a position where you want to be in like ignore them like truly ignore them and that's a skill that takes some while to learn because it's hard and it's really easy to take criticism from people especially if like their family whatever but like you want to make sure that you're listening to the people that actually can influence decisions with your success and yourself and what makes you feel happy and content and going on the journey in life that you want and that's literally all that matters that being said i love you so much stay sexy stay um goal-oriented uh okay i sound like a freaking mom never mind i'm not gonna say that but you know what I mean? You know, I love you. You know, I want you to be thriving. This is one piece of hair here that's been pissing me off. Okay. Anyways, y'all know I'm unhinged, but um, I love you. And see you in the next episode of Brown Girl Unscripted. Also, please, 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 please make sure you go and rate and leave a review of our podcast because when we grow, you grow and you get more podcasts, better content, even like better quality content, you know what I'm saying? Because we get studios, etc. So please make sure you do that and make sure you hit that follow button for the Brown Girl Unscripted YouTube channel and the Brown Girl Unscripted TikTok and Instagram because we want to see you there. We want to support you and we want you to just be thriving and learning and living and be part of this community. Also, I mean, we have a newsletter, but like that's follow the, follow the channels first. Okay. One step at a time. Okay. I love you. Bye. Mwah.